Hello, my name is Alex with 8-Bit Tutorials, and so today we're going to be talking about workflows, screens, and fields. We're going to jump into Jira, so make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit like, and let's jump into the video. All right, I am sticking to what you can do as a local, just a Jira project admin, right? You're not a site administrator. And so you're just like a lead or somebody that has the ability to add and remove people and delete issues. So you're like an administrator as from a role perspective. And I'm just kind of walking you through what, what these different project settings mean. This video is going to be probably the trickiest out of all of them of, of this series, at least because almost everything here requires a site level administration. So it's probably not going to be the most valuable of videos but I did want to share some nuggets, right? I want to explain to you what workflows are, what screens are, and what fields are so that if you want any modifications, because the Jira administrators, right? The, the true, like the site admins, they don't usually go around like asking teams, hey, do you want any changes, right? It's usually the leads, aka yourself uh, or the project leads, right? That are putting in the request, right? Because they would like something different. So this video here is intended to kind of give you like what if scenarios or, or the art of possible, if you will, right? Of what can I request, right? What kind of changes can I see if I wanted to? So that's kind of what I'm going to focus this video for to give you the most value, right? I'm going to have a dedicated video to show you if you're a site level administrator, how to actually make workflow changes, how to actually um, modify screens and fields, right? We're going to be talking about that in a future video. So make sure you subscribe. So let's jump into workflows. So what you can see in the workflows or what you can do here is again, very limited, but you can see what workflows are associated to your issue types. Now, I kind of mentioned this in my last video, but I'm going to go into it a little bit more detail here is each issue type can have their own workflow. So if you wanted your stories, your bugs and tasks to follow the same workflow, as in they have the same statuses and they have the same columns in your board, you would define a workflow for that. But if you want your epics to follow a different workflow, right? Maybe the epics don't have to have be peer reviewed and maybe your epics don't have to go into um, like QA, right? So if you didn't want those statuses to appear or be an option in your epic, you would want your epic to have a different workflow, right? And so this is where either your administrator or you, if you do have a site admin, right? This is where you would add a workflow. You would add existing, right? This assumes that somebody has created that workflow already, but assuming that that workflow exists already, maybe your site admin did it for you or or if you're, if you're working in conjunction with your site admin, they can come in here at the workflow and then they'll be able to assign, quote unquote, assign the epic to that workflow. And now you're going to have two entries here. So this is powerful stuff. Again, if you want to kind of separate many of the teams that I work with, I, I'd say it's 50, 50, really they're equally split where they just take the default. Every, everybody shares the same workflow, but some teams are a little bit more, um, I don't like to use the word picky, but the teams are a little bit more pickier, right? And like their epics and maybe another issue type that they might be having that they might include have a different workflow specific. Maybe sometimes even the bugs have their own workflows, but anyways, this is kind of where you do it. Now, what you can see here is a, as a, ad, as a, just a project admin, right? You can see the text version, which to me, this is super invaluable. I don't, I've never liked this view, right? But it just tells you the statuses and how they can transition or how they transition with each other. There's no transitions out of these statuses because they're all to all. And I'll show you that in the diagram, which is a lot more valuable in my opinion. So when we look at the diagram, you'll see that each status has an arrow pointing to it that says all. And this means that from any status backlog, I can go to any other status done, right? And so if you don't want somebody to create an issue and then automatically move it to done, right? If you want them to go through through a rigid process, your workflow would have to be manipulated so that you have transitions between each of these statuses. So each of these rectangles is a status and the arrows, what I like to call verbs, right? It's what you do is the transition. And so by default, you get this all to all statuses, right? Which is great if your team's a little bit more mature, but if your team needs a little extra help, right? Maybe they're not mature enough yet, or maybe the trust is just not there yet. You, you can definitely like force them into a specific path. So this is where you kind of want to go and explore that. And other than that, that's really it. Right. You don't really, you can, if another team or organization has a perfect scheme that you're like, you know what? I love that one. I, I want to use it too. You can have your site admin switch the scheme and they'll give you that scheme, right? Which will basically inherit all their workflows and you'll, you'll get that. Just keep in mind that once you do that, you are basically married to that scheme, right? So if anybody makes any changes to the workflow, you're going to get those changes too. So right now you were independent and it's just for us, right? But you can definitely modify this so you can share it with anybody else. If you're a site admin, you're going to want to click on actions and this is where you're going to be able to now 
edit. Now you'll see that I moved right to the global because this interface here is different. Not in scope for this video, so we're gonna skip over this. But again, if you haven't subscribed and you are interested in this, make sure you leave me a comment. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna make a video. So don't don't feel bad. I'm not gonna leave you hanging out to dry. Uh, we're definitely gonna be talking about this. All right, let's transition over to screens. So the screens are control which fields show up in your Jira project, right? And so there's hundreds of fields available in Jira. And you may have noticed here that I don't have hundreds of fields, right? And so you can control what fields show up, right? And so by default, okay, by default, you get the bug gets its own screen or, or screen scheme, if you will, and everybody else gets a default. For every project that is a software base, this is how it comes out of the box. When you add a new issue type, it automatically falls under the default unless you tell it otherwise, right? And so let me kind of just walk you through what these different things mean. So I'm going to show you, but you won't be able to do it yourself, right? But when you click on the default screen, it's going to take you again back to that global one, right? You'll see again, this kind of changes over here, but this is where you can control and see which fields show up. Now, as a project level admin, right? The one of the reasons you want to know that this exists is because if let's just say priority is something you're doing a lot, priority is going to show up at the bottom. If we come back and look at our issue when we hit create. So let's let's hit the create button. I have to scroll all the way down to the third from the bottom to hit my priority. Now, if priority is something that you do a lot, right? And maybe you're driving your team by priority. Maybe you want it right underneath the summary. But when I do that, I don't have to hit save, but watch this. When I hit refresh and I go to create, You'll notice that my priority is now front and center. It's the second thing is right underneath my summary. So if you ever wanted to reorganize how or where these fields show up, you definitely want to talk to your site administrator, your Jira configurator guy, person, lady, person, and have that person, Jira admin, move things around. So this is kind of where you do it. Now, if you wanted to remove fields, right, or you wanted to add fields, you can do that there as well, right? So you would want to know which fields you want in your Jira project and in which issue type. So you'll notice that this is the bug one. And what's different here from the other one is your priority is a little bit higher, right? I didn't make that change. It's just, they just assume that priority is a little bit more important for a bug and you get this effects version. So you didn't have this in the other one. So you'll notice that when I go to, when I switch from, well, let me show you the story, right? So I'm showing you the fields here. I have a fixed version. You do not see an assigned uh, effects version. But when I click on bug, things change, right? My priority is gone. It's not gone, gone, but it just got moved back to where it's in the screen for the bug. But now I have the effects version and I have an environment. So here's my environment and here's my effects version. We're going to be talking about those in future videos. So again, if you haven't subscribed, please do do so now. But yeah, you can see that depending on which issue type I pick, right? It's, it's, you have the potential to have different fields that you're collecting. So important stuff here because again, not all issue types are created equal. And if you're trying to organize your, your team a little bit better, you might want to capture different information like epics usually have an acceptance criteria, right? And your stories might have uh, like a user story part, right? Where you actually want to insert the user story itself because sometimes the user story won't fit in the summary, right? So it's just up to you what you want to collect, but you definitely want to have a good partnership with your Jira administrator because that person is going to be the one that's going to be able to do this. So, and you really can't do anything other than like expand these so you can see how things are configured. Because if you also remember from my last video about when we're talking about issue layouts, you can, if you wanted to present your user with different fields when you create, when you edit and when you view. Now this is important because when you create your issue, you can just tell them like, Hey, fill out these 20 fields. Right. And when you're viewing the issue, you can show here's the 20 fields. Right. But maybe you don't, maybe you only give them one shot to edit a field. Right. So maybe you don't want them. Like if you're collecting a date or currency or something of that nature, maybe you don't want your end users to change it. Right. Because once it's set, it's set forever. So you want to remove that field from the edit screen. And so when you do that, basically the field, right. So if I try to click on it like this, it won't, it won't be editable. Right. Uh, this is a bad example here, but what I'm trying to say is like when I click into it, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I click into it here, like I would not be able to manipulate the story points or the label or something, right? If I remove it from that edit screen, be careful if you do that, because if you're relying on any automation or some other like tool to kind of edit tickets for you or issues for you, they won't be able to edit it either because it's like an all or nothing. So we'll talk a lot about it in a lot more detail in my more advanced videos, but I just kind of wanted to give you a heads up that just give you an art of the possible there. And the last thing we're going to talk about is field configuration. So again, nothing too much to talk about here because 
as I mentioned, right, this is a C system default field configuration. Out of the box, every single project that you create gets this system default. And so you want to be very careful because the only reason people come in here, in my experience, right, in my five years of experience, is to do one of two things. You're either going to make a field required or you're going to change the render. Let's talk about required first. So Making a field required means that when I hit the create button, right, if I'm back over here and I hit create here, I can make components required or priority required, which means that I cannot hit that create button. Like if I try to hit create right now, it's going to tell me summary is required, right? Because it has a little red asterisk. So to, to add that red asterisk to more fields like reporter and summary, right? Like they have it now, it's here. So if I go to summary, or reporter, you'll see yes, and then you'll see yes on the issue type, which by default you get it, and then summary is yes. So if you wanted to make any of these yeses, again, you have to work with your site admin for this, but in theory, you can make any of these fields required. So when you try to create your Jira project, now they're required, right? Pros and cons. Pros, you have required fields that your users have to fill out. Cons, if you do it at the system level one, guess what? If you have 100 Jira projects, now all of a sudden all 100 Jira projects are gonna have the same required field. And if another team is not using like due date and you make it required, you're gonna make a lot of people very unhappy. Fortunately, there's a way around that, right? You can own field configuration and and assign it to your project. So again, we'll talk about those in a lot more detail in a future video, so make sure you subscribe. But for now, I just kind of want to give you awareness, right? And then the last thing is renders. So the renders is kind of important because this wiki here, like this description, you can add style so you can do these kind of things because these actually come in as a like a, a rich text box, right? So if you wanted to change that, that's just where you where you have that ability, right? So you'll notice that my comment and my description are already in that environment or in that configuration. When I switch over to bug, I'll have the same thing for environment, right? I have this rich text thing where I can add attachments. I can underline make things bold otherwise if you don't have that right then it's just a big text box that is just very plain text and and it's not too valuable so this is this is why some teams kind of ask me like hey this field can can we make it a, a, a wiki style render and as a side admin I mean, you'd come in here and make it change it there so anyways that's pretty much it for this video again not much you can do here other than i just other than what i just highlighted right and so as a site administrator, you'd uh, definitely be able to come in here, edit these things so that you can make the required fields or the renders. But again, you're going to impact every project that uses the system default. And by default, every project will use it. So you want to be very careful if I haven't made it abundantly clear. So anyways, that's it for this video. I am available for hire, right? So I specialize in doing this from a configuration standpoint. So if you need any training, any coaching, any just help with Jira, feel free to check out the description box below. My website and all my information is going to be there. If you have any help, let me know. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments. If you haven't liked this video, please make sure you drop a thumbs up and please subscribe. And if you, find this video valuable and you think maybe somebody else that you know might be exploring Jura, feel free to share it with them, right? Uh, the more people that I can help out, the better, because at the end of the day, I'm just trying to help you guys learn and understand Jura. Maybe you love it as much as I do, right? So anyways, that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.